if you look at Mount Rushmore, you think that's designed, but what is it that allows us to infer that with reliability, that allows us to draw design inference where it actually has some scientific oomph? Design Inference is a book I wrote in the mid-90s originally. It was actually a doctoral dissertation in the philosophy of science, and I was trying to understand what is it that allows us reliably to infer design. So it's one thing, we all have intuitions about design. If you look at Mount Rushmore, for instance, you know, you think that's design, but what is it that allows us to infer that with reliability, that allows us to draw design inference where it actually has some scientific oomph rather than simply being a, a vague intuition. And so I approach this as a statistician, and uh, there is an existing theory in statistics where you reject chance and, in fact, can infer design if a pattern is given in advance of an experiment. So you have a pattern that's set and highly improbable event matches that pattern and then you can reject chance and in some cases infer design. Challenge for me was to find uh, cases where these patterns are not given in advance as in statistics. So I wanted to apply these ideas to the origin of life and subsequent history of life. And the thing is, we are here already. So the patterns, as it were, are given after the fact rather than before the fact. We come here, we see these patterns, what is it that would allow us reliably to infer design? And so what, uh, what I did in the design inference, I had this theory, have this theory of what you need is a highly improbable event that matches a pattern, and it has to be the right sort of pattern. It's a pattern that's given independently of the event. And you can do this after the fact sort of thing, uh, as well as you, you can do it in the statistical context. So think of this, for instance. Uh, you have five children. They're presenting presents to their parents. It's a one gives a, a bowl of china, another is a plate setting, another are some uh, teacups. And the whole, all the gifts match a given full set of china. Was there collusion or did these children just happen by chance to pull, buy these gifts independently? And you would say, oh, there's design there. They work together. And so in what we find is the pattern was not given in advance but they did still, we can tell after the fact that this was the result of, of design and collusion. So long story short, what you need are two things. You need a pattern and a, uh, that's, that gets matched with a highly improbable event. And when that happens, as it were, you're triangulating on design. Why is this significant? Well, we use these methods in a lot of different contexts. Uh, we use them in data falsification, forensic science, a lot of other places. It becomes interesting when we apply it to nature and say, is there design in nature? And that's what this method is, uh, claims to be able to do and show that we can find design in nature. Mm -hmm.